Boston attracts people from all over the world. They come here to satisfy their thirst for knowledge, to find new opportunities, to realize their dreams. All of this makes Boston a fertile ground for collaboration. But the beautiful thing is, today, you can collaborate from any corner of the world. So, to explore the idea of collaboration a little further, let's go and meet a consummate innovator. He may have influence on your daily life without you even knowing it. Make a UI prolific problem solver. Give us some examples of the problems you've worked on. All right, so some stuff that I've done includes like a, you know, like a little piece of software that sits you know, sort of inside your email client so that when you send emails that have, where you say they have attachments but they don't really have attachments, it like warns you and asks you if you really meant to send that, that email and then gives you the opportunity to go put the attachment you forgot back inside your email. Happens to me all the time. Right, doesn't happen to me anymore. Uh, I, I have, uh, I've written some software that allows me to edit images on, on the web. So I don't have to download the software from example, from like a Wikipedia and edit it. I can actually just do it right in the website. Yeah, it's really annoying when you have to download, edit, upload. That's right. So just do it right in the browser. Um, I've written some software to uh, sort of make decisions really easy, like a little web-based thing that you can use to, to run like real elections for, you know, Things as trivial as like where are we going to go eat dinner tonight or what are we going to what are we going to have on our pizza? Extreme democracy. That's right. Uh, sort of uh, voting machinery for the masses. So uh, so yeah, lots of lots of little lots of little projects like that. Um, but the real project that uh, that I've actually invested a lot of my time and energy into is uh, is a, a big operating system project called uh, called the the Debian project. But do you have Debian running on this laptop? Absolutely. Um, uh, I uh, actually the computer came with Windows on it, unfortunately. But I installed Debian on it before I even booted Windows once. Unfortunately. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because Windows is a proprietary operating system. Debian is a free software operating system, and we are here at the Free Software Foundation. Uh, why? What do you use? Uh, I actually don't know. I have a Mac. Uh, well, uh, you probably are running Mac OS, uh, which is a proprietary system, but uh, no worries. Debian will run just fine on your Mac. Uh, I can be converted. All right, maybe we'll get you set up before you uh, head off today. All right. <laughs> and by free, you don't mean you don't have to pay for it. That's right. The, uh, but, but by free, we're actually referring to freedom. Uh, um, so we sometimes say free as in free speech, not Free is in free beer. Although the last one is pretty good too. Uh, that's right, and uh, most free software is actually available uh, at no cost, so you can you can have it in, you can have it like free beer as well very often. But uh, we're really actually referring to four concrete freedoms. Uh, what are they? Um, so the first freedom is the freedom to use the software for any purpose. Um, so that means that if you want to use it commercially, if you want to use it in your startup, um, well, uh, you'll be able to do all of those things as long as the software is free. That's great. And what's the second freedom? So the second freedom is the freedom to study that software, to see how it works. Um, so for example, you can ensure that the software is not doing something that you don't want. So uh, you know, you know, maybe um, malware viruses or pieces of software which maybe are even put in there by the creator but which are designed to, to spy on you or show you ads, for example. You can see that um, and you have the freedom to change it. So you have the freedom to actually remove functionality you don't want or to build in new functionality you do. That's pretty cool. What about the third freedom? So the third freedom is actually the 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 freedom to share it. So you know, I mentioned that uh, I could give you a copy, and I can because the license for the software that runs on all you know any piece uh, any piece of software in Debian um, allows me to share it freely. So uh, and any user of Debian can can share it. Every user of Debian has that right. That's right. Um, so, for, um, which is very different than with a proprietary system, for example. Uh, if I wanted a copy of Windows, you would have to choose between violating the license that you agreed to with Microsoft and, and violating our, our friendship. Uh, that's, that's not a great choice. Absolutely. And free software will never put you in a position where you have to make that choice. 
All right, and what about the fourth freedom? The fourth freedom is the uh, is the freedom to sort of share changes that I make. So, for example, if I take my email client and I make an improvement to it so it catches missing attachments, I can share that improvement with you um, a as well. And what this translates into is sort of a freedom to collaborate. It's the freedom for 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 you to give you know you, the change that you've made um, to me and for you know for 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 me to share it with you and for everyone else who's using that software to also work on it and improve it and through that process we can create software that does you know that has more features that has less bugs than what any one of us would have been able to do individually. That's pretty amazing. Now as I look at you, I I see a node in a vast decentralized network of developers who together are creating the Debian system. I'm curious, if we didn't have such collaborative communities, what would the world look like? It's hard to imagine the internet, for example, without any of this, w without the work of free software. Um, it's hard to, um, uh, if your phone runs Android, it has a Linux kernel um, cre created by a community of, uh, commu a distributed community of, of contributors. Uh, your television probably runs uh, um, a free software operating system, or at least um, significant parts of it. The the infrastructure that runs the internet, almost every web server you talk to, almost every programming language that uh, is used to create the software for almost all the software that uh, that, that people use, especially on the web, is uh, is designed and implemented with free software. That is absolutely incredible.